I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's my second f uh, Future of Freedom event uh, in a row. So I guess I didn't do a terrible job last year. Uh, and as I see from the cloud, my presentation should have been about Reiner, but I didn't have uh, now 40 minutes was not enough to research his biography. So uh, yeah, uh, as Reiner mentioned, uh, my name is Mikolas. I'm from Vilnius, Lithuania. And um, now I'm, I could say, uh, unemployed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I recently left Liberty TV. Uh, I was with, uh, with it for, uh, for more than three years from, from the very beginning. And uh, I was the CEO and uh, my main uh, worry was that this month would not be the last month of an independent, crowdfunded internet television that started in uh, 2016. Uh, the story was quite exciting and it was uh, a total chaos. Nobody knew what we are doing actually. In uh, 2016, uh, one of the <clears throat> most influential journalists in Lithuania, uh, Mr. Andrew Stapinas, uh, got his show canceled on the national broadcaster. Uh, although the show was with good ratings, it had prime time uh, television. Uh, as, as far as the rumor goes, uh, the show was too politically uh, uh, incorrect and uh, he was always criticizing you know the government the elected uh, officials and it's it's just a rumor but uh, as as we we heard the prime minister of that time called the general uh, director of the national broadcaster at that time and said well enough is enough so uh, his show got canceled he had some free time on on his hands and came up with an idea that uh, independent media outlet should be uh, created where uh, journalists would be most importantly free from any third party influences, whether it would be business, political, social. Uh, they, they, they would be free to do what they believe is right and, and needed to be done. So uh, we launched a uh, crowdfunding platform uh, on, on patreon.com with no content, just saying we will do this political satire show. In one day, people pledged $4,000. By the end of first month, we had $14,000 and almost 5,000 people pledging uh, for this new internet television which is basically just a YouTube channel. So we, we're, not, we're not even broadcasting on, on regular television. Uh, for three years, we managed to keep our base of patrons uh, to about five, four and a half thousand every month who pledge around $15,000 every month. Of course, as Liberty TV grew, uh, it, it, it was not enough. It, it would not take us to two weeks of, of the month with that kind of money. So uh, we try to differentiate our income through grants, through commercial projects, through selling tickets to filming of the shows. Uh, and it turned out to be quite successful. Liberty TV last year made all, almost a million euros in, in revenue. So that, that's not your average NGO. Uh, <laughs> revenue, revenue. It, it's a non-profit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, now we are uh, with uh, 115,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. It may not be a lot uh, for you, especially when uh, comparing to the I know the, the top American YouTube channels, but uh, this is the number one subscribed Lithuanian media outlet. Uh, we, in the previous slide, I showed that we generate 1.7 million views every month. So 
um, this is this is quite successful. Also, we have broadcasting partners in regular TV channels, so uh, we try to reach the 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 biggest audience that we can uh, with with people who not. Um, do not do not watch YouTube, especially the elder ones and uh, people living in um, in rural uh, regions. So um, yeah, this is the context about about Liberty TV. Um, the main thing that I worked on for the past one and a half years is fight, trying trying to find the recipe to fight to fight disinformation. Uh, so disinformation uh, is maybe better for you known as fake news. It's a, it's a uh, pop more popular term, although it is different. Uh, yeah. fake, fake news may be more called uh, as misinformation when a true, uh, a true, uh, a true news uh, is, uh, is false because of an error, but not deliberately. And this disinformation is created to be false by design. So uh, this is uh, a big threat for us. Uh, it's it's a meme for your entertainment. Uh, it's it's a big threat for uh, for societies in this age uh, because we have this uh, division of of. I can move uh, away. Uh, this division of uh, influences coming from the West and coming from the East. And of course, naturally, uh, everyone wants to be more influential. Uh, and the bad thing is Russia is very good at it. And they, 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 they pledge a lot of money uh, to it. I believe it was uh, a, last year, Two billion dollars, maybe, uh, just to fund all all the, the disinformation uh, campaigns all over the world, and uh, Lithuania has only 3.2 million speakers around the world, and only uh, 2.8 peop uh, million people live in Lithuania, and uh, yet we get. 205 information attacks per month. So that's a lot. Of course, this includes social media, regular media, uh, Russian state-run media, and until now, no one, uh, no one knows how to fight it. The Western uh, strategy was more. Uh, uh, let's say, more, more defensive until now. Uh, we used to react and say, no, no, this is not what happened. And it is impossible to debunk and explain yourself for every uh, act of information attack because there's so, so, so much of them. Uh, the main topics of attacks are the, the basics of our uh, democratic countries. Uh, the socio-economic backgrounds, uh, political situations, calling a country that it is not actually free and fascist uh, is a very popular term, uh, that NATO is trying to attack Russia, that EU is basically Soviet Union, and, and so on. So uh, the, 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 all, the, all the best things that Lithuania managed to achieve in the 30 years of independence are the main topics that are being attacked. <coughs> Sorry. So what, what we did three years ago is now kind of a very trending uh, saying, humor for social change. Uh, just a month ago, we had a conference in, in Yerevan with the Digital Communication Network with the, with the same title. But actually, uh, we started this doing, we started to do this three years ago, we started to run a, a political satire show, just like uh, 
you may know Mr. Johnny Oliver. So this is very similar. And <coughs> sorry. And we, we noticed that when you put the situation into absurdity and make good humor out of it, even people who were pro that opinion start to, you know, think twice. We're not criticizing them. Thank you very much. We, uh, uh, we, we put things into perspective. And this is what people, especially who are swingers, who are undecided, are very much uh, uh, influenced to. Uh, yeah, another meme for your entertainment. Uh, so uh, not only us, but also our enemy, let's call it, also uses all this entertainment and light content to, uh, to put their influence toward our, uh, let's say, Western side. Um, they produce, you know, cartoons, Masha and the Bear, yeah, you know that, although Masha is running around with a Soviet soldier's hat for some reason. They do political satire, they do memes, they, they try to trick people into thinking that this is just casual entertainment content, although the messages are uh, hidden in the context uh, often quite well for the uh, untrained eye. So uh, since we are talking about our work with Russian audiences, uh, we came up with an idea that we should transform our show, which is called Hang In There, in Lithuanian, to a Russian show, Drzhitistan, which is also called Hang In There, uh, from the famous Medvedev uh, phrase when, when people said that Mr. President, he was the president I think at the time, we are living very hard times here and he said hang in there. <laughs> so we start to run a show in Russian language. We have a lot of, quite a lot of uh, Russian journalists, political refugees in Lithuania who for some reasons, I, I, I don't know, they, they couldn't work anymore in Moscow. So they moved to Vilnius. So uh, we gathered them up. They know the context of Russia very well. Uh, we have some Ukrainians, some uh, Belarusians, and start to produce a sh the same show in Russian language for the Russian audiences. Not even Russian minorities living in Lithuania but our main target was to, to, uh, uh, to show th this absurdity and sometimes uh, irony and sarcasm and there were some insults, um, I, 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 I must admit, uh, to people living in Russia. And it was a huge success. Um, starting from the biggest piece of audience being from Lithuania, living in Lithuania, by the end of season one, <clears throat> after 34 episodes, 70% watching the show was from Russia. And the feedback was amazing. And we had our show on YouTube, on current time television, on Estonian national broadcaster. But then decision makers changed um, in the funding organization and we got our funding cut. So uh, for one year, uh, I have been looking for other funding opportunities because it's very hard to sell freedom and uh, democracy. You know? Do you want to buy some freedom, <laughs> sir? <laughs> so uh, you do? One kilo. One kilo of democracy. So um, actually, I managed to, to fund this project. It is in the finish line now. Uh, and as I left Liberty TV just recently, uh, I believe they, they will get the grant uh, and will produce the show again, this time with proper budget for communication and for marketing the show to the Russian audiences 
And I truly believe this can be a success because us living in Lithuania, we are free to speak whatever we want. And shows produced from Russia are not so much. Uh, yeah. Another thing is my last advice for you. Uh, uh, when, when, uh, I will move away. When uh, United States senators visited Lithuania, uh, the embassy called us and said that they want to have an exclusive interview in Lithuania with Liberty TV, not with the major TV channels, but with this four months old YouTube channel. And what Senator John McCain said, if you can see it on the screen, is very important to us and it, it was always uh, very motivating for me myself that when Liberty TV has unmovable moral standards and we refuse some great amounts of money over the time from companies that didn't fit into what we believe in, uh, we believe that we get, you know, common people attract, uh, attract people who are like them. So we believe that we attracted the, the best of our society and that this audience can truly change the future of the country and of the region. And so my advice is that uh, you, you have uh, issues in, in, in all of your countries. So we should stop listening to the narratives and playing by the rules. And we st should start creating our own narratives and to be proud of our success stories and put the, those success stories on the uh, yeah, to, 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 to the public. So for the last time, please subscribe to Liberty TV. Uh, and thank you very much. <laughs>